As we enter a new decade, extreme eating has never been more dangerous. A mind-blowing 1.6 billion adults worldwide are now overweight. And one in four Brits are obese. And at the same time, an incredible 1.6 million people in the UK are affected by an under-eating disorder. In this brand new series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, we'll meet anorexics who've taken under-eating to the ultimate extreme. I just don't need this. It's just in the way. And we'll see how overeating can lead to an early grave. I know that if I don't lose this weight, I'm going to be dead. Plus, in a five-day stay at our all-new feeding clinic, Dr. Jessen will be pushing our polar opposites to the absolute limit to try and break their dangerous eating habits. Have you lied? I'm sorry, I can't sit here and be told I'm wrong. Don't bother me with the camera. Before it's too late. We're looking beyond what's on your plate and exploring the psychological triggers that lead to dangerous diets. It's no longer about what you're eating. It's now about what's eating you. Welcome to the brand new feeding clinic, where a super size and super skinny will be forced to confront their obsessive relationship with food in a unique five day meal swap, attempting to shock them out of their deadly diets. Tonight's residents are Julie and four times lighter, Jade. I don't eat like a pig every day. Julie, I'm not being funny, but you're 24 stone. Do you not think I know that? They're checking out of the last chance saloon and checking into the all-improved diet den, which is going to be tougher than ever. This week's super skinny is Jade Potts from the West Midlands, who thinks her body is far from perfect. When I look in the mirror, I feel quite upset, disgusted. It's not what I want to see, and I wish I could change it, the snap of a finger. You know, women are supposed to like their bodies and feel confident, stuff like that, I don't. I hate my body. After having a baby 18 months ago, full-time mum Jade became a food-free zone. Nice. Since I've had Jake, my appetite has just gone downhill dramatically. I pick at food, I don't like food, I don't look at food. I just have a very negative vibe towards food. When she was pregnant, she was actually radiant and she looked very healthy. But after she had Jake, the weight seemed to drop off and it was very, very noticeable. Jade may have lost her love for food, but has fallen head over heels for its replacement. I personally think that I have a great relationship with caffeine. <laughs> I love caffeine and caffeine probably loves me. <laughs> During the day, I could get through maybe 10, 11 mugs of coffee, a two litre bottle of Coke, and cans on top. Luckily for Jade, bad habits are banned at our feeding clinic, which Dr Christian Jessen will be running for the next five days. OK, so dressing gown off. 23-year-old Jade has been put through a detailed medical to make sure she can tackle the task ahead. But first, Dr Christian looks at her weight. Is that it? Or lack of it. At five foot one, Jade should weigh between seven and seven and a half stone. 79 pounds. Not a huge amount, is it? No. Jade is just five and a half stone and worryingly underweight. The perfect body for me would be seven stone, have curves, maybe have a pair of hips and a pair of boobs. So you are 22 inches around your middle. Just a natural womanly figure. I'm going to go around your thigh. So you're 14 and a half. Something that I haven't got. I'm literally straight up and down. Seven and a half rounds your arm, OK? A diet free of food is giving Jade deficient results all round. You are, well, you're five stone nine. And that gives you a BMI, if we work out your height to weight, of 14.5. Now, someone your size, and you're quite petite anyway, yeah, I'd like to see you with a BMI of about 18, 19, 20, something around there. Um, how do you see yourself? Um, I see myself as a skeleton with skin. 
Really? Yeah. When you look in a mirror, that's what you see? Yeah, I think it's disgusting. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. I really don't have a clue. Don't have an idea. All right. Why are you here? I feel like it's the last straw for me, really, to put weight on. The stakes have never been higher for this young mum. Jake means the absolute world to me. If my weight does keep on dropping, you know, I could be really, really ill. I could end up in hospital, not be able to care for my little boy. Don't worry, Jade. You're not the only one in diet distress. Meet your new housemate, Julie Tregeagle. All 23 and a half stone of her, which is about four jades. I like food. I like it, so I eat it. In one sitting, I can probably eat a big bar of chocolate, crisps, sweets, other small bars of chocolate, you know, anything I can lay my hands on, basically. I personally would prefer a huge, man-sized bar of chocolate than an actual man. And for her main course, single Julie, who still lives with her parents in Portsmouth, tucks into her usual supersized supper. My mum doesn't believe in small portion sizes. I absolutely adore my mum's cottage, cottage pie. It's amazing. Tend to overdo the cheese, perhaps. And let's not forget the fantastic family curry. I generally do two at a time, and there's half a pint of double cream in each one, which is not good. But it tastes good. It tastes very, very good. Which is why Julie is Dr Jesson's next guest at the feeding clinic. And it's definitely no place like home. And she could be in for a shock. A BMI over 40 is morbidly obese. Over 50 could be fatal. Your body mass is 51.5. You are at very, very high risk of death from your weight. OK, so it's serious. Yeah. Have you always been overweight? What's happened? Um, I wasn't up until I got to secondary school. But all of a sudden, it just started going on. Were you so happy at school? No. Well, I was bullied a lot because of my weight. It, it was a constant thing. It never stopped from the, from the day I started school to the day I left. It just made me feel like I was worthless, you know, and that's all I was. I was just this fat girl in school, and that was it. Do you think the bullying caused you to eat more? Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't... I don't... I wouldn't say I comfort eat as such. Um, I eat because I like food. There's two things what we call emotional hunger yeah. and physical hunger, and I bet you haven't felt physical hunger for a very long time. And I think, although you say you don't comfort eat, I think that there is a large amount of emotional eating with you. Yeah. Jade and Julie's weights are worlds apart, but their cravings for candy and caffeine are about to collide. Oh my God. I could be like a leg and a bit of a stomach. What do you weigh? I weigh 23 stone eight. Right, I was five stone nine. My God, she's small. And she looks quite fragile. I didn't know an adult could be that small. My God, you're <laughs> a quarter of me. Jade and Julie have provided details of a typical week's meals, which they'll be swapping over to highlight the danger zones in their diet. So, Jade, we're going to start with you. I'm going to start with breakfast. Let's have a look. Little bit of toast. Uh, anything else? No. Let's go on to lunch. Is that it? That looks about one lunch to me. Come on, dinners. More sandwichy things, some chips, a bit of Chinese food about snacks. Crispy things, chocolatey things. Now, although that doesn't look very much, there is one huge swimming pool sized thing missing. You substitute most of your meals for caffeine, 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 caffeine. It's thought the safe amount of caffeine is 400 grams per day, which is about four cups of coffee. Jade drinks two and a half times this amount, the equivalent of 10 cups of coffee. This level of consumption could easily become caffeine addiction. 
The side effects of this can include high levels of anxiety, stomach complaints and irritability. All right, Julie, start with your breakfast. Let's have a look. Where are the other two? Apples, bananas and ice cream. Great, let's have a look at lunch. What's this? So what cheese else? and onion rolls. And then finally, your dinners. Let's have a look. Dinners, dinners Julie. There's the chicken curry. Yeah. Let's have a look at snacks. A woman of Julie's size would normally be consuming nearly 4,000 calories a day. According to the food diary she gave, she's consuming just over 3,000. The calorie count from Julie's food diary says that she ought to be losing weight, but I know that she's 24 stone and she is still piling on the pounds. So with Christian keeping a watchful eye, could Julie be in for a hard week in the feeding clinic? Coming up, Jade snaps as she hits rock bottom during her caffeine come down. Somebody gave me a cup of coffee for sake. Julie gets a message from America that hits her hard. Julie, you've got to change from the inside. You're eating too much food. And that's what it comes down to, is gluttony. And Anna Richardson investigates how to get a taut tum. But it's going to be painful. I'm going to cry. We all have an obsessional relationship with food, our bodies and weight. I'm Anna Richardson, and two years ago on Super Size vs Super Skinny, I was a curvaceous size 14 to 16. Since then, I've lost two stone. Am I happy? No! My body and ways to improve it have become my obsession. If there's a quick, painless fix, like teeth bleaching or Botox, I'm the first in the queue. But it's never enough. So stretch marks all over my boobs, all down my hips, on the inside of my thighs, and those are really unattractive. Despite the weight loss and healthy diet, I'm still not satisfied. I want a perfect body, and I'm prepared to try anything. So, in this series, I'm relaunching the Richardson Fitness Regime. And to give me even more of an incentive, I've signed up with Matt. Well, why not? No limb will be untouched in my quest for body perfection. Legs. One. Boobs. Two. Bum. Three. Ow. Matt, I want to be realistic. Can I basically turn this into something much better in just three hours a week? Realistically, yes. However, it's going to take a bit of work. OK. Tone-tastic, here I come. The first problem area I'm tackling is my stomach. Now, I'd say the jelly belly is something that every woman wants to get rid of. <laughs> Now, I know the gym is the last place you'll find me, but I'm prepared to give it a go. Stomach crunches, weights, I'm trying them all. But I might have to wait for weeks to see any difference, and I want a flat stomach now. So I found the latest Hollywood craze that's made its way over here. It looks like scary scaffolding, but it's called Butte Camp Pilates. They've got, like, straps and levers and pulleys in a kind of Tower of London medieval kind of way. It's billed as the best way to sculpt your core muscles by combining precise stretches... So a nice controlled fluid motion. ..with resistance and weights. Oh. It's not for the faint-hearted. I'm going to cry. You have to use a serious amount of stomach control to stop the straps pulling your legs over your head. How do I get them back down? <laughs> and it hurts. <laughs> A lot. Oh, it kills. I'm not joking, that's probably one of the hardest workouts I've ever done. Very little effort, I said. Plan B. There's word out about an easier way to lop off the love handles, and it sounds right up my street. The number of us having these so-called quick fixes or non-invasive surgery, like skin peels and injectable fillers, has doubled over the last 12 months. And I'm squeezing one into lunch. The 
best optimal shape that you want is the hourglass shape. Mm. And at the moment, we need to achieve that. Yes. Um, because at the moment, it's more of a, a level straight. Yes. If you see, it's only a few inches kind of difference. I know. So to achieve the hourglass, we're going to have to put you through some work. <laughs> right. Meet my new best friend, laser lipolysis a new high-tech painless procedure using a red light laser which penetrates your fat cells and releases the fat inside them. Belly fat, prepare to be blitzed. I literally can't feel a thing, but I'm being lasered to within an inch of my life. Ah, this is the kind of inch loss I like. Easy street, here I come. And no catch? Okay, here we go. Oh, there's a catch. Of course there is. Okay. Once the fat is released, it needs to be burnt off immediately through exercise or it's reabsorbed. I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to take off. Why didn't I read the small print? For every 10 minutes of laser lipo, you have to do 5 to 10 minutes on a vibrating exercise plate to burn it off. Just make sure that the shoulders don't get any lower than elbow height. Right. <laughs> Which isn't a walk in the park, let me tell you. My eyes have gone wobbly. <laughs> but easier street doesn't come cheap. For maximum results, you'll need eight treatments at £100 a zap. <sighs> Find out later in the programme if these minute makeovers really do work. <laughs> This week's feeding clinic residents are Julie and Jade. With bags unpacked, it's time for the girls to prepare each other's first meal. It does look really nice. It does, doesn't it? Looks it looks colourful. It is. Don't speak too soon, Jade. This is one of Julie's mum's cholesterol-crammed curries. <laughs> are you going to put more in? In this one, yeah. Oh, my God, of sat fat, there is 9.4 grams. <laughs> and while Julie serves up Jade's coronary, I mean curry, dairy-free zone Jade sorts out Julie's dinner and pops the kettle on. When I realised that all I was getting was coffee, I sort of thought, oh, my God, that's it. I can't survive on that. This is going to take forever. <laughs> Feel a bit. <laughs> Keep going. You can do it. <laughs> it's kind of making me jealous because I want to eat it. I've finished mine. I feel sick. I'm absolutely stuffed. It's day two, and Jade is 24 hours into her cold turkey to kick the caffeine. Symptoms that she may be experiencing include headaches, fatigue, nausea, or even muscle pain. I'm feeling really sluggish this morning, um, quite sick, a bit vile to be honest, and I'm really missing my cola and my coffee. Good job. Fair enough. I feel really moody. If there was nobody in this room and I could trash it, I would. I just need to get all the stress and anger out. Somebody give me a cup of coffee for sake. Come on, then. Let's go get breakfast. And for dairy-hating Jade, Julie's cheesy start to the day just isn't helping. Okay, bacon, mushroom and cheese sandwich. Oh, my gag. I'm sorry. Especially as her usual morning fix of the fizzy stuff, a.k.a. Julie's liquid breakfast, is in reaching distance. Making me really, really angry, and you've got to drink that in front of me. After nearly two days free of stimulants, Jade is ready to snap. I just felt like crying. <laughs> My body now, you know, needs the stuff. So me not having it, it's like a druggie coming off. Drugs. Like any dependency, there's usually a trigger point. So Julie and Jade join forces and look to their past to pinpoint where their food issues started. 
this one, um, I was 12. And that is when the weight started going on. Why do you um, think, you know, you started to gain weight? Well, I've always said I don't feel like I comfort you. Yeah. But looking back, I think I must have done because yeah. that's when my granddad was in the hospital and he died shortly after that. Um, so this is sort of proving me wrong. It seems to show that I do comfort you. Sorry. It's OK. With Julie getting the picture about where her problems lie, Jade remembers a time when she could face her own reflection. I felt beautiful yeah. when I was carrying Jake because I had more weight. I had yeah, this you can see it in your arms. That's how I want to be yeah. again. <laughs> Minus the big tummy. It was straight after having Jake that my food issues started. Why would you say that was? There's been certain points that make me think. You know, as you know, my eating and a few other things like my tempers and my moods, or does it all boil down to postnatal depression? Yeah. But I've never received, you know, any help or talked to anybody about it, so I don't know for definite. Yeah. It just sounds like it does. You know, there's been something serious for me to end up like this. Recognising that she might have had postnatal depression is a huge turning point for Jade. It can affect up to 10% of women after giving birth, and many, like Jade, don't even realise they've had it. One of the major side effects is a loss of appetite. This can result in feeling run down and irritable. A healthy diet of fresh vegetables, fruit, milk and cereals, all packed with vitamins, are known to aid recovery. The following day, and Jade, now keen to make progress, is hungry for nourishment and can't work out why Julie's portions are so small. That's my lunch. Mm -hmm. Jade's concerns about Julie's diet come to a head. Julie, there's just there's one thing now that I need to say. Right. You don't live off what I've been given so far and got yourself, you know, 24 stone in weight from this sort of thing. That's right, that's what I would have for my lunch. You'd have two cheese and onion rolls? Yes. I don't eat like a pig every day. Like, people seem to Julie, think I'm not I being do. funny, but you're 24 stone. Do you not think I know that? It doesn't make sense, Julie. It doesn't make sense. I'm only saying what I know is true. I'm, you know, I'm not lying, I'm not... Is it true, though? Yes. It doesn't look like it. Well, maybe it doesn't. It but... doesn't. But what? Have you lied? No. Have you cut your food diary down? I'm sorry, I can't sit here and be told I'm wrong anymore. I'm fed up being told I'm fake and I'm lying and I'm wrong and don't bother me with the camera. Don't. Jade's confrontation has sent Julie's feelings into free fall after years of her bottling them up. All my life, I have put a brave face on and saying, I don't care. I don't care what you think doesn't bother me. I'm smiling and, you know, I'm happy, I'm fine. It's not until I get home and I close my bedroom door and that upsets me. With the atmosphere, shall we say, fragile in the house, Dr Christian wants to get the girls back on track. I think it's OK to be emotional, it's OK to be upset. In fact, it's healthy. If things move you, upset you, be moved and upset, it's fine. It's been 10 or 11 years that I've been this way and it's going to take longer than a week for it to change. And I'd like it to take time. I don't think you can do it quickly. I don't think you should do it quickly. And it's a long... This is life, actually. This is you for the rest of your life. This is not you for the next three months. Yeah. OK, so it's not a race. And emotionally, I want you to start admitting things to yourself. I worry about the denial because that's going to hold you back. I suspect because your food diary, as it stands, what you gave us, doesn't tie in with actually what you must have been eating in order to gain the weight yeah. that you have. It doesn't tie in. So I'm not saying necessarily that you're fibbing, but I am saying that I think you're probably behaving yourself quite well that week. 
Possibly. Would you agree to that? Possibly, yes. Yeah. And just to make sure that the message is getting through, Dr Jessen has a serious reminder for Julie. Julie is like one in four Britons who are obese, and a staggering 1.6 billion people are overweight worldwide. Leading the way is the USA, where two-thirds of the population are in this category. In this series, we're turning the spotlight on eight morbidly obese Americans, who are a dire warning about just how bad things can get. Difficult start in the morning when I wake up, excruciating pain in my joints. In the creases, you sweat. It is the most ungodly smell. I have a problem with putting my shoes on. I almost hyperventilate. For these eight weighty US citizens, it's too late to turn back the clock. When you're this weight, there's so many ways to die. But for Julie, it's not. She's been sent a personal message from the biggest of the eight. Sixty-year-old Elena Morgan from California is 37 and a half stone and requires six staff to get her through the day. You're looking at this huge woman and you're wondering how did she get there? Slowly. It just ekes up on you. One day when you wasn't looking, you're 150 pounds. And then when summer comes, you're 180 pounds. And, and it doesn't matter if it's, well, I only had two hamburgers. Or I only had a glass of milk and 10 cookies. You're eating too much food. And that's what it comes down to, is gluttony. So, you know, when you get this desperately ill, you're in trouble. And there's not anything anybody can do for you. You either have to bite the bullet and heal, or take the slippery slope to death. And me, I know that if I don't lose this weight, I'm going to be dead. If I were you, if I was 50 pounds overweight, I'd go running and screaming to a gym as fast as I could. And I would do everything. I would take my kids on walks every day. And I would play with them every day. And I'd turn that godforsaken TV off. And I would start doing living life to the fullest. to change from the inside and you can save yourself you can if you really think about it and you have to work on it and never believe that evil little person that says in your ear that I'll start my diet tomorrow when you hear that voice come in your head I'll start my diet tomorrow believe me that person's out to kill you what do you think? It was, it was difficult to watch that, I have to say. I found that difficult to watch. Mm. You and her are in the same weight category yeah. that we call mor morbidly yeah. obese. So your risks of those things is closer to reality than perhaps you think. It is. Coming up, four anorexic sufferers start their epic journey to tackle their dangerous relationship with food. If I don't do something about it, this will be it forever. And our diet swappers, Jade and Julie, face their final meal. Look, I've got a podge. <laughs> Look! <laughs> Jade and her diet partner, Julie, who is four times her weight, have been swapping their usual meals in our diet den for four days. It's the final night in the feeding clinic, and courtesy of Julie's mum's infamous recipe, Jade's having calorific cottage pie. Thank you, Julie's <laughs> mum. For a family of four. <laughs> 
but after finding a new affection for her fodder, she's not complaining. That looks delicious. <laughs> and by filling herself with food and not fears, Jade's appetite is back with a bang. Mmm, that's lovely. And even Jade's super skinny lasagna is enough for jumbo portion loving Julie. Do you think that would have filled you up at the start of the week? No way. I've learned to listen to my body and my stomach rather than my head when it comes to food and eating. Mm. Christian wanted my body to have hunger pains and I can certainly say now that I'm actually having hunger pains. Yeah. I'm going to carry on eating man-sized meals. <laughs> Food's too nice to waste. <laughs> Yay, she's got it. <laughs> oh, look, I've got a podge. <laughs> look, it's even hanging over my jeans. Look, I know it's only a tiny bit, but look, it is. Look! <laughs> Job done. <laughs> the girls realise that this week has all been worth it. It's time for Jade and Julie to check out of the feeding clinic. Dr Jessen is sending them on their way with a 12-week healthy eating plan. So, it is your last day, and I'm about to let you go home, which I bet you're delighted about, aren't you? Yeah? OK, let's give you the diet plans. That is your healthy eating plan, Jade, Julie. Thank you. And I'll see you in 12 weeks, OK? Thank, Thank you. From now on, I'm going to have a completely different perspective over food. Um, I am going to bulk up my portions. Um, I'm going to start you know, having the portions that my body needs um, and eat it all. <laughs> Hi. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. Good luck. Good luck to you too. Makes you so strong. I'm really proud of you for this week, so... Bye. I'm going to go home. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be so much more happy. Um, and I think that's what's important for me right now, to be happy for me and make sure that I'm happy and I'm not just making out that I am. We are going to see a whole new me in the next few months. One point six million people in the UK have an eating disorder. This includes anorexia nervosa, which has the highest rate of death compared to any other psychiatric condition. Up to 20% of anorexics die from the illness every year. Ros, Fiona, Ashley and Morag are anorexic. Nearly every part of theirs and their family's daily routine is dominated by the disease. For the next eight weeks, they volunteered to take part in a course designed to challenge some of the key aspects of anorexia as part of their road to recovery. I'm a human being, I should be intelligent. Something went wrong somewhere. To help our sufferers address their issues, we've enlisted the help of two renowned eating disorder specialists. Consultant psychiatrist Dr Peter Rowan and eating disorder dietitian Ursula Philpott. Today, the group are meeting Ursula and each other for the first time. For me, I, I think it started in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, being scared, probably, mm -hmm. of this new situation, not uh, quite knowing how to, to manage it. Ros Hallard is 37, 5 foot 2 and weighs around 5 and a half stone. She was diagnosed with the disease after coming home from a busy life in Thailand. I think anorexia stemmed from moving back to the UK and having a baby, so pro probably um, a bit of postnatal depression. I hate myself for my son not seeing me as the bubbly, outgoing, vivacious, keen, full of life person that I was. It's actually quite harrowing, in a way, to look at a person like that and to see what they've done to themselves and to remember how they used to look. I don't feel that I have the roles that I'm married. 
and I would like her back again. I want to see her again. I wish it, I wasn't how I am, but I don't know what to do and I'm scared and I just need some help. So it sounds like um, the fear of change is, is, is quite yeah. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand where you're coming yeah. from. Whenever I do change something, whether that be eat something a bit more or just not doing what I usually do, my anxiety levels go right through the roof and I don't feel like there's ever going to be any end to it. The first time I was aware that I started to have difficulties with food was around the age of 17. I was going to be going to university and I panicked. Fiona Kelly is 25, five foot five and weighs six and a half stone. Her anorexia forced her to give up her dream job as a maths teacher. When I was at university, everything was about numbers. It was a complete number game for me because I'm a mathematician. Um, I discovered calories for the first time and I could be very controlling and make sure I only had a certain number of calories. Um, and I read in a magazine somewhere that you had to do over 10,000 steps and so that became another of my rules. It felt like an equation that I was putting in the numbers and the output that I expected would come out. Of course, weight's not as predictable as that. I don't want to be Fiona the anorexic anymore. I want to be Fiona the person. It's taking over my life. I don't want it to take over my life. It's not even necessarily because you want no. to do more. It's just a punishment thing, and I then adopted this attitude that I needed to earn my food. Ashley is just 20, five foot nine and eight stone seven. Anorexia affects one in 2,000 boys compared to one in 250 girls. His bright future as a footballer fell apart after a hand injury. My dreams were shattered, I suppose. I then tried to get a grip of my life in other ways and uh, food was the main focus for me then. I suppose it was my way of saying, I don't really need pastas anymore, I don't really need these carbohydrates because I don't need the energy anymore because I'm not exercising like I used to be. It bred from that and really now it is kind of more of a, an OCD thing now, to be honest with you. It's obsessional behaviour that you get with anorexia. Strange patterns form, you, you do things in a certain order, eating at certain times, not eating after a certain time. He has the same plate. He uses the same teaspoon, which sits in the same place. And it's pretty much like that every time he eats. It's just utter, utter fear of losing control. Anorexia to me is like a cancer. It's become, it's become its own terminal illness for me. And it's just a vicious circle where I'm just turning into this resentful, bitter, unfulfilled 20-year-old. If I don't do something about it, this will be it forever. I can I understand exactly what, what you mean. Thinking, well I've got to I've got to go I've got to walk here, I've got to go there and do this, I've got yeah, to do this yeah. and then go swimming and then come back. And if anybody yeah. tries to get in the way of it then you just ignore them mm -hmm. and you're kind of blinkered. It, it's like having another completely different side to your personality. Yeah. Anorexia, it's like a, an evil twin sort of sitting on your shoulder and constantly nagging at you to eat less and do more and uh, never really gives you any peace. So there's you, normal you, and there's anorexic you. Morag Fieldsend is 36, five foot five and weighs seven stone five. She's lived with anorexia since her teens and it dominates every minute of her day. I have a certain amount of walking that I have to do to sort of allow myself a certain amount of calories every day. She will walk um, particular routes, particular distances for a particular time. We're talking an hour and a half plus. It can be uh, snowing and she'll still have to go out for the, uh, the walk for a particular period, for a particular distance. It just sort of takes over your life before you really know where you are. Morag is petrified her daughter will develop the disorder. I'm very conscious that I don't want Lizzie to pick up any of my bad habits. Yeah. 
but as she gets older, she'll become more aware of these kinds of things, and I'm going to have to explain myself to her, and I don't want to have to do that. I would undoubtedly describe uh, anorexia as a monster. It can take the joy out of people's lives. Throughout the series, the group are taking part in a radical plan to help them come to terms with their disorder. The purpose of the course, as far as our anorexics are concerned, is to help them develop better insight into the illness and understand it better, help them develop the wish to want to get better, and to provide them with at least some of the tools which will enable them to begin to move forwards with the illness and also beginning to develop a more normal and healthy relationship with food and eating. Coming up, Anna finds out if her fast-track tummy treatment has turned back time. And after three months apart, Jade and Julie rejoin forces as they find out if their swaps all been worth it. Obsessional behaviour over diets and body dysmorphia affects us all. And when it comes to looking good, I'm definitely a fan of fast results for very little effort. Especially when it comes to my stubborn, flabby stomach. Like most of us, I'm trying out everything available at my gym. And earlier, I even tried this scary-looking device, which was torture, I can tell you. And then I located a quick fix in the form of laser lipolysis, which fights the flab by penetrating fat cells. So, am I any nearer to the washboard midriff I wish for? It's now 29 instead of 29 and a half. It's I've lost half an inch! <laughs> That's unbelievable. From 31 and a half to now 30 and a half. That's amazing. It's wonderful. I can genuinely say that I think that there is a slight, very subtle change in my tummy region. I can feel it's not quite so flabby. I think this is a combination of the laser lipolysis, which without a doubt completely works, and the Pilates workout, which again, definitely works, and I could really get into that. I can see why celebrities get hooked. But I think, you know, good old Matt and his kettlebells, I think he's shaving some inches off my, uh, off my rotund tummy. Next week, my regime continues with the battle of the boobs, and I come face to face with my biggest fear, surgery. They've not even started cutting yet and already the smell and the whole ER-ness of it is making me feel a bit... <laughs> Three months ago, Julie and Jade checked into our brand new feeding clinic. And now the girls are back to see if they've turned things around. I'm hoping today to have reached my goal of losing two stones. I'm really nervous to find out whether I've put any weight on or not. I just want to see some good results. So, Julie, how have you been getting on then? Tell me. At first, it was very hard to change my eating habits so drastically. But now it's, you know, it, following the plan, the second nature to me. I don't even think about it anymore. My worry factor, you remember all those lists of things that might fail for you, yeah. was the <laughs> fact that Mum was quite in control of what you ate as well. How have you got around that one? I don't live with, live with my mum anymore. So, so you're in charge now? I'm you? in charge now. Tell me how these last three months have been for you. I'm loving food now. You're loving food? Mm. Gosh, I never thought I'd hear you say <laughs> that, really. Do you feel better? Do you feel healthier, happier? Good, yeah, I feel so much healthier. I feel like I've got loads, actually, bundles of natural energy. So, yeah, I do, I feel absolutely amazing. I know when you were in the feeding clinic, you did make some connections between your how happy you were feeling or actually how unhappy you were feeling after your, your baby was born. Mm -hmm. What have you done about that? When I left the house, I actually had to go to the doctors and go and get it sorted. And has that made a difference now? Oh, yeah, it's made a hell of a difference, yeah. Before Dr Jessen reveals the final results, the girls put their past behind them. Oh, God! Oh, hello! <laughs> look at oh, you! No, 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 look at you! Jack, you out, Miss Thing! <laughs> oh, my God, how's the three months been for you? Really good, to be yeah. honest. You look really well. Thank you, you too. I think you definitely lost some. I think you, yeah, you can see in your face you've put on a little bit. Oh, thank you! 
Dave. Girls, I'm coming to interrupt you. I just want to say, you have both done me so proud because you have made so many massive changes, really, to your lives, haven't you? That's not an exaggeration. Julie, for you, I know a little bit, you're thinking about going back to school? Yeah. In a different kind of way, tell me. Uh, since I last saw you, I've actually been into a school um, and sort of helped out in, like, as in a teaching assistant. Do you think if your weight was the same and you hadn't made these changes, you'd be doing that or it wouldn't be happening yet? No, because I wouldn't have gone into school. No way would I. I wouldn't have had the confidence to go in and say, can I come and help for a morning? Um, so it's helped me a lot. And Jade, my concern for you, I think, was, was little Jake, really. Yeah. And I didn't want him to copy what Mum was doing. I'm happy now that I know for sure he's not going to pick up on bad habits because I'm not, you know, setting examples of bad habits. So have the last three months all been worth it? I can tell you, you have managed, which is phenomenal. You've put on half a stone in three months. In oh three my months. Gosh. Not only that, you've put on two and a half inches around your belly. Really? <laughs> yep. That's why you're in the stretchy leggings now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, madam? Your turn. How do we think? Um, I hope I've reached my two stone goal. Losing two stone. You've lost two and a half. Oh my god. You've lost two and a half. <laughs> I'm lying, I'm thinking. And That's wicked. Eight inches off your tummy. Oh my god. That's amazing. Are you happy? I'm ecstatic. I can't believe that I've lost two and a half stone and eight inches off my waist. That's that's more than I could ever imagine that I would have lost. It's it's amazing. <laughs> All I can just say is I don't want to burst because I'm absolutely over the moon with all the results I've had today. Next week, our feeding clinic clients are Leighton and Lucy. <laughs> Things get tough when he gets a personal message from America. I'm probably awake and conscious maybe of a 24-hour day, maybe six hours. Anna continues to feed her addiction for a perfect body. It looks good if your nipples are a bit correct, so I either do a bit of nipple twiddling or a bit of the old Coke cans for your ice cubes. And our life-saving course for our anorexics continues. Just, just, just like, I just don't need this. Sadly, Elena Morgan died two months after being filmed for this programme.